Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay jewelry video at KeepsitCrafts.net. Today I'm going to show you how to use polymer clay to recreate favorite findings that perhaps you found at the beach or on nature walks and then we'll turn them into a really pretty charm bracelet. So here are a few shells that I've had in my stash for quite some time. I've got a bag full of seashells and I actually pulled out some of my smallest ones and what I've done is made two-part molds of them. Now if you want to learn how to make a two-part mold, I've done a Friday Findings video explaining how to do that and you can check that out. We're just using mold putty and I'll show you, they just pop right in. We have one part and then the other part and now we can make an exact replica of our shells. So if you've only found a couple of nice objects, you can duplicate them over and over again. And the same with these other shells. I've just gone ahead and made two part molds for each of them. And then I chose a color palette and I actually chose that from a Pinterest board. You can see the, the pin here with the colors that I chose. I mixed all of my colors with some translucent. I just thought it would look nicer for seashell charms to have a little translucency to them. But it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever colors you want. These were just some scraps that were in my scrap clay bin and I mixed up colors that I liked. So then you want to make sure that your clay is nice and conditioned. So since this has been sitting for a while, I'm just squishing this one around a bit until it's softened up. And then the trickiest part of using a two-part mold is getting the exact right amount of clay. So generally what you want to do is first roll your clay into a nice ball and then you can roughly shape it to the shape of the mold. So I'm going to do, be doing this shell which is kind of football shaped. So I'm rolling my clay to that shape, placing it in the mold, and you usually need far less than you think you will. And then I'm going to take the top and I'm checking my little registration marks. Again I explain all of that in the making a two-part mold. And then make sure these meet properly and then give it a good squeeze. I'm really squeezing very hard. If you've benefited from these videos, consider becoming a patron. You can support this channel with a dollar a month or whatever you can afford. See my Patreon page for details. Now that's pretty good. I actually could have used a little bit more clay in there. And that one came out pretty nice. And there you have a lovely impression of your shell. Now let me do another one and let me show you what happens when you overfill it. So we'll do this, this little periwinkle and I'm going to use way more clay than I need just to show you what to do. But the more you use these molds, the easier it is to estimate just how much you'll need. So again, roll a nice smooth ball because if there's any creases left in your clay, it will stay in your molded piece. So you can tell right away that that's going to be way too much clay, but I'll show you what to do here. So matching up my registration marks, give it a good squish, and now you can see all this clay spilling out the edges. And what you can do is just take your craft knife and start cutting away the excess. And then once you have the excess cut away, then what you want to do is take that piece, roll it into a ball again, and then do another impression. And now you can see there's a lot less, less excess, but there's still excess. And so you'll reach a point where you'll, you will just have maybe a tiny bit of excess clay. And all you'll need to do is trim with your clay blade and then maybe do a little bit of smoothing after popping your piece out of the mold. And it's as simple as that to make your clay pieces. Now here's another way. If you don't want to mold your own objects, you can just use molds that you buy from the store. This one's called Sea Life by Scalpy. And I actually use some of these on my bracelet as well. I like the little clam shell and the starfish, so I use them. them. And you do it pretty much the same way. 
just roll the clay into a ball, shape it approximately to the shape that you need it to be. And then the best thing to use is a flexible clay blade to remove the excess. Now on mine, I actually used a ball tool and kind of hollowed out the back sides of mine. I just thought I would like the look better and it would look a little bit more realistic. So I hollowed out the back sides and then once again use the flexible clay blade and I kept doing that until I was happy with the way it looked and then these you can just pop it out and there's your impression and if you find it needs a little refining like this clamshell I use the inner part of this very small ball tool to kind of press that down and roll those edges and make everything a little bit neater. Remember this is clay so just because you pressed it into a push mold doesn't mean you can't refine it and sculpt it and even reshape it quite a bit once it comes out. Now once your pieces are all sculpted the way you like if you want you can add a little bit of realism what I did is I took some perfect pearls before I baked these and a soft brush and I just dusted the insides so like on this one just like when you look at real shells and they have that kind of luminescent iridescence on the inside you can do that with mica powders I thought of using like a pink blush color because often these have that but I wanted to keep my palette with the pearls today. And if you want to, you can also brush the outside with some pearls as well. Whatever you want. I didn't want to get too much with this, but I did a couple of them like that. The last thing to do before baking is to provide a way of hanging these from your charm bracelet. And I have these little tiny three millimeter screw eyes. You can also just use an eye pin with a hook in it. And then you can just press. And I like to press and twist these in so that I can hang them from my charm bracelet. And you can see on these baked ones, I already have these in place. And I'll probably unscrew these, add a drop of super glue, and then screw them back in place so that I'll know they'll be there permanently. So here are a couple of my clay shells out of the oven. And I'm just going to add a little bit more to them. You can see I did add the pearl to the insides of both of these before baking. But I just want to add a little bit more detail before adding them to my bracelet. And what I love to use are these Golden's Iridescent and Interference paints. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're a little bit pricey, but they come in these huge tubes, which I will probably never use in, in their entirety. And I actually like to apply them with my finger. What I have here is just a scrap. Oh, you can see. Ooh. This is the Interference Gold Fine, and this is the Iridescent Pearl. Fine. Ooh, see, you can really see it on the paper. I like to use a little bit of paper to just kind of clean off my finger and not have too much on it. What I do is open the container, put my finger on the end and get a little bit of paint on it. That's probably too much. And then kind of wipe it off till it's almost dry on that piece of paper. And then I just rub it over the shell and it kind of highlights the high points but it doesn't put too much on if you need a little bit more and if you find you put too much on you can always just take a little bit of sandpaper and sand it off but I just think that's really pretty and then for this little periwinkle I'll use the interference gold it's interesting, you know, it doesn't look like much coming out of the bottle, but it just adds a gorgeous shimmer. And I'm going to go against these lines on the periwinkle and just kind of highlight them. I don't want to get too much on there. It just gives it a beautiful sparkle. 
You can use an applicator other than your finger if you must, if you don't like getting your fingers dirty. And here's a whole array of charms that I made using my shell molds as well as a couple of the Scopey molds. And because we used this palette of colors and they also were all colored with the same paints, they all go together really beautifully. And then I also found some real seashells with a similar iridescent kind of look in my bead stash. I have no idea where these came from, sorry. But these just go perfectly. So I'm just going to make dangles with head pins for the shells and then attach everything to a piece of chain and I'll have myself a bracelet. So I hope that you'll consider taking some treasures that you found, making molds, making clay charms, painting them, and making yourself something really beautiful based on real objects that perhaps you've collected or somebody you know and love has collected. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe if you want to see more. I upload new tutorials every Tuesday and Friday. So if you're interested in the supplies I use, there's a link in the upper right and in the description box to go to my blog post. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and check out my Patreon page to help support these videos. Here's another look at the project we made. Happy creating. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.